Good morning. All right, we are in Ruth chapter 4 today. Uh, I will be reading verses 1 through 6. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can come to it regularly, that you promise to um, change us through your word, that you promise to lead us through the wisdom found in your word, the character that, of yourself that you have revealed to us through your word. Um, thank you for the fact that you uphold your scripture with your own power and that you protect it and you protect your church. Um, God, we pray that you would um, change us today as we submit to your word. Um, just be with us, bless us, and show us mercy. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, Ruth. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Now Boaz had gone up to the gate and sat down there. And behold, the Redeemer, of whom Boaz had spoken, came by. So Boaz said, Turn aside, friend, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. And then he said to the Redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not, tell me that I may know, for there is no one besides you to redeem it, and I come after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. Then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the custom... Oh. Sorry, I was starting to read verse 7 there. So... It ends with him saying, Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Okay. So, let's observe. First of all, I should, have, I should observe what verses I'm reading so I don't go too far. But, um, all right, so here we go. Um, Boaz went to the city gate and waited for the Redeemer that he had told Ruth about. He pulled aside this Redeemer and also 10 elders of the city to talk about the matter. He told the Redeemer of Naomi's desire to sell um, Elimelech's, Elimelech's field. Boaz points out that the man has the first right to buy it. Boaz implies that he wants it if the other man doesn't. The first Redeemer says he will buy it, and so Boaz informs him he will also acquire Ruth and have to provide an heir to the line of Elimelech. The Redeemer then declines to redeem the field and Ruth, so he does not damage his own inheritance. Okay, so what's going on here? Is Boaz being sneaky? Um, I mean, I don't think so. Um, but he is uh, certainly setting up a discussion in a particular way. And um, I think we need to figure out or try to figure out why he might have set it up in that way. Um, and I think that what we see here is a really good example given by Elimelech of how to deal with a matter completely openly and honestly with showing and, and actually showing um, the other side of the discussion favor and being generous and being completely honest. And, and, um, and, uh, and we'll go through why I think I'm, that's what we see here. Um, but it's an example of how to deal with delicate issues. This is a delicate issue. It's not just a field. It includes an inheritance um, the heirs to a man who's dead, and the life of a, a young woman. 
not life or death necessarily, but her life moving forward. Um, so um, the first thing that Elimelech does is he goes to the standard kind of agreed upon meeting place of where business is taken care of, the city gates. So he's doing this because it's expected. It's the thing that you would do. So he's making sure that um, everything is above board. He makes sure that every party is represented, okay, and every authority is represented. Um, so he is representing himself, obviously. Ruth has also asked him to represent her. Um, and, and Naomi, right, in the field, uh, concerning the matter of the field. Um, clearly, this other redeemer is there. And then th there are 10 elders of the city. So a good deal of, a good number of elders to represent um, the public being aware of what's going on. Um, and he didn't pick and choose which elders. It, it appears to just be whatever elders happen to be passing by. So he wasn't cherry picking his favorite people to come by. He just took 10 elders from, he's just sitting there waiting for whoever comes by, takes 10 elders of that and they all sit down. So he's not cherry picking his crowd with the exception of the redeemer who has to be there. And I think he's doing this so that there will be no misunderstandings and there will be no miscommunications. If certain parties aren't represented by either themselves or their chosen representatives, or if um, the, the elders of the uh, city aren't there, there could very well be misunderstandings. He, he could have chosen to deal with this by going to one person and then another person and saying, well, I talked to the Redeemer one-on-one, -on -one and, and he said he agreed to this. And so he goes to a couple elders and tells them, you know, I, I talked to him and he, he agreed to this and they say, okay, that sounds good. And then he goes back and tells another person, you know, it's way too easy for things to get confused when you're going one person to another. So he's doing something very prudent here, which is just say, hey, we all need to get together and let's talk about this. And he's actually really clear at when he starts, right? He brings up the matter immediately. He does not um, he doesn't engage in a whole bunch of niceties to try and try to ingratiate himself to people. He just gets down to business and he's honest. He just says, Na Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, you have first rights, buy it. Right? He's being completely honest here with his intentions. I want to talk about this land that's being sold. And I, I want you to make a decision right now because I'd like to buy the land, but you have the first claim to it. So he's being really open and honest. Um, but the question comes to mind, why does he bring up the land first and not Ruth? Because <clears throat> Boaz wants, he wants Ruth. He, he doesn't seem as concerned with the land as he is with Ruth. Um, and so why does he bring up the land first? Is he trying to hide the best part for himself? No, and I think the response of the Redeemer gives us a clue to this, that I, I think Boaz kind of knew that this Redeemer wasn't going to want Ruth as part of this transaction. Um, clearly he has a, a family, he has sons. He doesn't want to mess up the inheritance that he is going to pass on. And I don't know exactly how that would have happened, how it would have messed it up, but somehow it would have messed it would have messed with his inheritance that he is passing on to his heirs, and he doesn't want that. And Boaz would have known this. <clears throat> so Boaz could have come to them and said, Look, Ruth needs a redeemer. You need to make a decision. Do you want Ruth? And the man would have said, Well, no, I I, I certainly don't want to redeem Ruth. I, I have and, and you're here, you could do it. So yeah, sir, by all means, you can take take Ruth, right? And then afterwards he could have said, oh, and by the way, Naomi's also selling her field. Whole truth is exposed, but that would have been in a way 
that actually benefited um, Boaz and set this other redeemer up to make a decision without um, maybe as much impartiality, without as balanced of a view because he would have been negatively influenced from the outset. So what Boaz is doing here is he's actually setting up this, presenting this case in a way that benefits the other side. Does that make sense? He's, he's saying, look, here's something you really want. I want you to make a decision on this thing that you really want. And the other man says, yeah, I do want that. I'll buy it. And then he says, well, you'll also need to, you'll also acquire Ruth. Right? So there are these stipulations that come with it. He's got this guy moving down this course of action to buy this field and then brings Ruth into the, the issue. Right? And so I think what he's doing is actually kind of undermining his own desires in the interest of being as fair as possible to this other redeemer. And he's doing it in the presence of all these elders. All those elders will come away from this transaction saying, wow, Boaz gave this guy every opportunity to buy this field. He actually undermined himself because clearly he could have just argued like presenting Ruth first. And the guy would have said, nope. And there would have been no discussion. So as I think we're all aware, that once we move down a course of action, once you have someone committed in their mind to something, it's hard for them to change course. So if he had got the guy committed to saying, no, I don't want Ruth, and then he said, oh, here's a field as well, the guy said, well, I'm already saying no. I'm, you know, he's committed to a course of action. With presenting the good part first, he's committing him to actually buying the field. And then he's having to deviate from that course of action, which is harder to do, to say, no, I don't want to take on this, you know, redeeming Ruth. Um, so Boaz is actually undermining his own desires in an interest of being as fair as possible to this other redeemer. And again, he's doing it in the presence of all these elders as well. Very wise, very smart decision. So he's arguing against his own desires first in the interest of honest and fair discussion of this matter. Um, and then Mo Boaz tells the whole truth, not just parts of the truth, even if it hurts his cause. I mean, he could have just left out the field entirely and said, do you want to redeem Ruth? And he's, the guy would have said, nope, don't want to do that. And the, the, the decision would have been, I'm assuming, legally binding because the two go together. So if the guy doesn't want Ruth, he doesn't want the field. But he doesn't do that. He's actually being honest. He's actually being open. He's being fair, and he's doing it in the presence of all. So um, we see that Boaz has wisely laid out this, this discussion. He has planned how he's going to present this stuff, but he has not done it in a way that benefits himself. He's done it in a way that, that benefits the other side. Um, he revealed... Um, everything in a way that is the most fair to the other person in the discussion in front of all parties. Um, so it, it keeps it from looking like he is unduly influencing this other Redeemer's decision. Um, it also keeps Ruth, um, an innocent party in this, um, out of unnecessary discussion. Because if he had presented the field, which the guy would want, and the man just says, no, I don't want the field, well, that's the that's what this other guy would want. And so Ruth's name wouldn't even have to come into it. And I'm assuming at that point he would have said, okay, you don't want the field. I mean, you would have had to redeem Ruth as well. And so like, he's just keeping Ruth out of it as much as possible. Now he, he's, he wants Ruth, but he knows this other man's not going to. And I think this is also on a side note, probably more evidence that Boaz doesn't have any heirs because he doesn't seem concerned at all with, disrupting the inheritance for his heirs. So he either loves Ruth more than his children or he doesn't have children. <laughs> um, and then, um, and again, it gives this other man every chance to make a good decision without uh, unduly influencing, influencing him. So it gives him the opportunity to act with a balanced perspective. All right, and um, so I think what he's done is like he's, he planned a course of action that's incredibly fair to all parties. It's done in the open. 
I think we all know that delicate matters like, like this that need public approval and will come to light eventually anyway are best dealt with publicly, right? And so that's what he's doing. He says, I, I'm going to buy the field publicly. I want to buy the field publicly. I want to take Ruth as my wife, which will be public. So I better go about solving this whole thing publicly, <laughs> not do it in private. He's very, seems like a very wise man. Um, and so what, what my takeaway for today is, I mean, I think we can see that, that what Boaz is doing is, is very wise, very, very God honoring and it honors Ruth and it honors the other side of the equation, this other redeemer. It honors the elders. It's honoring to everyone. Boaz is a man who makes good decisions. He, he submits to God's will. He concerns, he concerns himself with truth. So my takeaway is that Boaz shows us that godly, transparent resolution of difficult issues begins with full disclosure of the truth, not just presentation of certain facts, even if it may lead to an outcome you don't like. Right? He could have presented just certain facts, and he, and he could have very well said, I told the truth. But by choosing only certain facts or arranging them in an order that benefits himself, would he have really been open and honest? Or would he have been manipulating? What he does is he presents the whole truth in an order that benefits the person he's talking to and not himself. He doesn't present only certain facts, even if it leads to something, an outcome, that is not in his best interest that he doesn't want. So, um, I think we would all do well to take that to heart, to remember that as we move forward in our lives and, and deal with the myriad things that come our way daily, yearly, and throughout the decades of our lives. And deal with each other fairly, openly, and honestly, and not try to hide things and not pick and choose what facts we're going to tell people but be truly open and honest. All right, let's pray. God, you are so good. <clears throat> um, you have yourself redeemed us. We thank you for that, that you are our redeemer. Um, we thank you that you have shown us through so many instances how to deal with difficult situations, and we pray that we would submit to your word, even when it doesn't seem like it's in our best interests. Because God, we know that following your word is the, the most beneficial thing we could possibly do, even if it doesn't seem like it in the moment. Being in line with your will, it is so, so right and so good for us to be in that place. But God, help us make those decisions. Help us to submit to you and submit to your word, even, even when it's difficult. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.